Ladies and gentlemen, you are mostly welcome on the Tenzimed educational courses. My name is Miklós Iyés, I am the president of the Hungarian Society of Art Illustiveness, and my scientific work joins me to the University of Pécs, Hungary, Faculty of Medicine, Department of Heart Institute. In my lecture, I would like to talk about the theoretical and practical questions of the non-invasive measurement of arterial stiffness. The first question which comes up, why do we have to measure arterial stiffness at all? A strong answer is given in the ESH and ESC guidelines issued in 2013 for the management of the arterial hypertension. In this guideline, the central blood pressure measurement is suggested because we have evidence that the central blood pressure is a better and stronger predictor for cardiovascular events than the brachial blood pressure one. Furthermore, it had been revealed that the central blood pressure lowering effect of the different antihypertensive drugs are different from each other. Thus, for instance, the beta blockers known less lowering the central blood pressure as compared to AC inhibitors, ARBs, or calcium channel blockers. The measurement of the pulse velocity is even stronger recommended by the guidelines. We have strong evidence regarding the independent predictive value of the increased aortic pulse velocity and increased aortic stiffness for fatal and non-fatal cardiovascular events in hypertensive subjects, diabetic subjects, coronary heart disease subjects, and stage heart disease subjects, and even in general population. It is very important to highlight that the aortic pulse velocity is an independent predictor of the cardiovascular events, independent from the traditional risk factors measured as score or Framingham risk scoring. Parameters which are provided by the pulse wave analysis and pulse velocity measurement can reveal asymptomatic atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, that is high cardiovascular risk. Stroke, coronary artery disease, peripheral arterial disease, altogether cardiovascular diseases are the clinical manifestations of the atherosclerosis. Let's see whether the relationship between atherosclerosis and the pulse wave analysis and pulse velocity is proven. Indeed, a strong association was found by the Rotterdam study between arterial stiffness and atherosclerosis in various sites of the vascular tree. Furthermore, aortic calcification was associated with increased aortic stiffness in and isolated systolic hypertension in healthy individuals published by McEnery in the hypertension in 2009. If the asymptomatic atherosclerosis is uh, a target for the screening, we have to admit that unfortunately we do not have accepted standard screening method for screening for asymptomatic atherosclerosis. Despite the cardiovascular diseases are double in their prevalence than the tumorous diseases. Therefore, there is an imperative, as said by Nagavi and co-workers in the SHAPE trial, to develop a new paradigm to screen for subclinical atherosclerosis to be able to prevent uh, its transition to a deadly and costly clinical and symptomatic stages. If we are take a look on the atherosclerosis as far as its epidemiology concerned, we have to call the P-Day study prevalence and extent of the atherosclerosis in adolescents and young adults. This excellent trial uh, involved more than 2,870 subjects who died between age of 15 to 34 years due to external causes such as victims, suicides and accidents and underwent autopsy and the main outcomes were extent, measure prevalence and topography of the atherosclerotic lesions. The results are shocking because between age of 15 to 19, fibrous plaque was seen in the abdominal aorta 
in 13.1% for white men, which went up to 30 to 34 years to 65.2%. More or less the same situation was observed among white women from 6.8 to 61.5% from age of 15 to 19 and to 30 to 34. However, in the Afro-American population, a slightly better figures were found, but not so much. It's worth mentioning that the plaques in age of 30, 34 were calcified in 12.6% among men, 13.2% among women, and even in the Afro-American men, it was even higher, 16.7%. Regarding the coronary atherosclerosis, this trial shows a very strong evidence that the asymptomatic atherosclerosis on the coronary arteries can begin in a young age, even teenagers and young adults. 262 heart transplanted subjects were measured with intracoronary ultrasound 30 days after the heart transplantation and uh, the donor's average age were 33.4 years. The results are also shocking. Atherosclerotic lesions were present in nearly 52% of this rather young population. The conclusion is, of course, that the search for asymptomatic coronary atherosclerosis should begin even in young age. Let me show you two examples. It's a teenager guy, 17 years old, in the LUD left anterior descending coronary artery. A plaque is seen, which is enlarged in the right picture. And in a 32 years old woman, left circumflex artery contains a large plaque and the ramus branch also. Referring to the previous statement that the coronary atherosclerosis can begin in relatively young age. If the asymptomatic atherosclerosis is so uh, early uh, age occurring disease and so lethal, it would be absolutely important to have many non-invasive methods detecting the asymptomatic atherosclerosis. Interestingly, not so many we have. Let me go through on each. ABI, ankle brachial index, is generally used method to, sc to screen and to detect asymptomatic atherosclerosis, but we have to emphasize that it detects a later stage because it detects peripheral arterial disease. ABI is low, less than 0.9, if at least 50% stenosis exists in the lower artery extremity. Although it is relatively easy to measure, however, if we take a look on the sensitivity and specificity of the ankle brachyland index to predict future cardiovascular events, this uh, picture is unfortunately disappointing because the sensitivity of low ABI for coronary heart disease only 16.5% and for stroke is even lower, only 16%. Of course, this paper concluded, which was a so-called systematic review, because of its low sensitivity yet high specificity, the ABI cannot be used as a generic screening test. If we go further on the non-invasive methods detecting asymptomatic atherosclerosis, we have to deal with the IMT, intima media thickness measurement with uh, ultrasound on the carotid arteries. It's perfect method, however, it requires a uh, very trained ultrasonographer and uh, appropriate device. The next, the Cardio CT, is even more modern technology, which provides excellent uh, inter, uh, information about the calcium score of the coronary artery, calcium content, and the coronary plaques could be evaluated as well. However, it provides uh, rather high X-ray load and it is rather expensive and the examination of course requires very trained uh, personnel. 
magnetic resonance is uh, less uh, important because uh, cardio CT proved to be a better one. However, it is also a very difficult and expensive examination. Flow mediated vasodilatation provides information about the earliest uh, uh, atherosclerotic damage, such as endothelial dysfunction, which is uh, characterized by the diminished vasodilatatory capability. During the flow mediated vasodilatation, we put a cuff onto the brachial artery and the upper arm. We occlude the cuff for nearly five minutes. Then we measure the diameter of the brachial artery before and after the occlusion. If the diameter due to the increasing shear stress after the releasing of the occlusion will increase with 5% I mean the diameter, in this case we can conclude that the flow mediated vasodilation is normal. This is perfect method, however, it is strictly uh, related to the cardiovascular research labs and not for the daily routine. The arterial function measurement, stiffness measurement, on the other hand, during the last 10-15 years, is a very promising method to reveal asymptomatic atherosclerosis. Indeed, this relationship between arterial stiffness and asymptomatic atherosclerosis and uh, the vascular damage is nicely seen by Peter Nilsson and Pierre Burtiri and Stefano Ram paper in the hypertension. The arterial stiffness is a cumulative measure of different effects and damaging effects of the cardiovascular risk scores and cardiovascular risk uh, parameters like blood pressure, lipid profile and uh, glucose and then which is called indirect parameters the arterial stiffness is suffering all of the cumulative damaging effects of different cardiovascular risk factors such as I mentioned and I would say why blood pressure, serum glucose, serum lipids are indirect measures of the arterial damage the arterial stiffness measurement is indeed a direct measure. I used to say, if we are measuring arterial stiffness, we are much closer to the fire. Concluding this first topic, why do we have to analyze pulse wave? Why do we have to measure arterial stiffness? The answer is given, because arterial stiffness tends to be a cumulative measure of the damaging effects of the cardiovascular risk factors on the arterial wall, which is shown in the previous slide. Because the increased aortic stiffness is an independent prognostic marker of the later developing cardiovascular events, we have robust evidence that the increased aortic stiffness is independent from the cardiovascular risk factors prognosing cardiovascular events. Furthermore, because the increased arterial stiffness can develop during early asymptomatic atherosclerosis. As I have shown in the previous slides, early asymptomatic atherosclerosis can begin in a young age. Thus, if we can detect this process and this procedure by the increased arterial stiffness measurement, it is very welcome. Very finally, as I have shown, the asymptomatic atherosclerosis, either in the coronary artery or in the aorta, can begin in very young age, even less than 35 years. Thank you for your attention.